and welcome. This is Marla with Mad About Cards and Crafts and today I have a collage style card. We're going to do a little bit of watercoloring with Corinne Brush, Pro, Brush Marker Pros. I have stamped my images using a VersaFine Black Onyx ink onto Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper. I used images from the Full of Think stamp set that was part of the September box of the month. I began by adding a lot of water to this first apple. I want it to look like a Macintosh. So the Macintoshes have that little bit of green where the stem comes out. So I added some apple, which is the green color. And then I added mahogany. Because I saturated this area with a lot of water, it was very light and I had to build up the intensity. It took me probably about three or four different layers. For the green apple, I'm going a little lighter with the water. I started with the apple color and I'm blending it out to the left. So you'll notice I'm very heavy with the color on the right hand side and then I'm going to add water that's on my brush and I'm just going to stroke that out throughout the apple. I do leave white space so when I go over it a second or a third time it's going to fill in those areas and give a little bit of a shine and it's going to create a light source. So my shadowing is on the right hand side of the apple and the light is hitting it on the left hand side. For the fourth apple, I do go with more of a Red Delicious and I add mahogany and red lipstick. For the third apple that I started, that really vibrant red one, that one is more of a red color and then I added just a little bit of the lipstick red. So I went for three different type of apple variations. I do use my brother's scan and cut to cut my images out. I'm going to color up a apple pie and also that pumpkin, which not pumpkin, that apple cider cup. And those are gonna be all of my apple products for my card because my sentiment is coming from the fall sentiment stamp set, also available, also included in the September box of the month. Now that box of the month did sell out rather quickly. It was called Autumn Vibes. Next month's box will be available. Uh, subscriptions were available. If you want to guarantee that you get a box every month, please make sure that you hit that subscription, that you get that auto ship because then you're guaranteed a box. Sometimes, you know, you might forget that it's the first of the month and you don't get over to the not too shabby shop quick enough. And these boxes, a good portion of them, I would say probably 80% of them are selling out really quickly. So you want to make sure that you're on that auto ship if you want to be guaranteed a box. The next box will come out on October 1st. We always have a hop on the first of the month. Next month is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have both a stamp and die and the box hop. We're going to have two separate hops, one on October 1st and one on October 7th. And so you want to make sure that you head over to the Not Too Shabby Shop channel prior to the 1st of October because Jamie does do release videos. Now moving on to my sentiment, I did mention that this came from the Fall Sentiments stamp set. I have some brown cardstock that I treated with my anti-static powder and I stamped the sentiment that said cutest apple in the orchard which is why I went with all of the apple products that were available to me in that full of thanks stamp set. I heat embossed it using Brutus Monroe um, gilded embossing powder. Now this is my collage die. This die comes from the greetery. It's called Curio Dividers. I'm going to use that area of the divider to cut out my sentiment, which is going to be, I believe that that's the largest box, either the largest or the second to largest box. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start cutting out different 
pieces of pattern paper using the paper pads from the box. There were two beautiful pads. One was called Autumn Vibes, which had more of oranges and um, browns in it and then there was a second one that was like pink and white and brown. I used the pattern paper from the Give Thanks for that brown and white paper and then here is the Autumn Vibes paper pad and the remainder of my little squares are going to be um, filled with pattern paper from that Aut Autumn Vibes paper pad. I found this apple barrel and I went ahead and cut that out. I'm leaving some of these open. I'm not going to fill each of the squares with images or sentiments. Some of them I'm going to use the pattern paper to my advantage to continue with the theme. These little collage dies are perfect for card making like this. It gives you an opportunity to use your pattern paper, which is something that I'm really working hard on. I'll have a couple videos linked at the end of this that share my use of pattern paper. It's something, I have a lot of it, I like to hoard it, and so I'm happy that I have this little die that's going to allow me to even use up scraps of pattern paper. Now I had a piece of red cardstock. This is a very delicate die. There are some that are a little bit thicker. You could stack this to give it more of a chipboard feel. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place it onto this A2 card panel. This is a white cardstock that kind of has um, brown flecks in it. It's from Paper Tray Ink. I don't know the name of it, but it's like a winter white. I didn't want to go with a white white. I wanted to stick with a more muted white for this fall theme card, but when I place it on, I that, that square right there is not lining up. So I am able to lift it up in time. You can see that it's kind of wavy at the bottom. That's because I lifted it up and I'm going to straighten out that box. So using wet glue is going to be your friend with this type of die. I added an extra layer of the brown cardstock just to give this a little bit of dimension, just to give the sentiment a little dimension. And then I'll use my glue, which is art glitter glue, to glue this down and I'm going to form it to fit that rectangle and then the rest of my pieces are going to fit nicely. Now I lost a piece. I had no idea what I did with it but I did cut two pieces of that brown and white striped paper with the leaves and I lost the little one. You're going to see that I'm going to like look through these and say oh is that it? Nope. I think I threw away the wrong piece so I did have to recut it after I inlaid these other pieces. So there is that apple barrel and I do have the plaid paper, which is really pretty. There's also a coffee cup. Now I'm considering my cup to be apple cider to stick with the apple theme, but you do have a coffee cup because it does have dark brown liquid, so it's either hot cocoa or probably coffee but I thought that it still fit the theme very well. This piece of pattern paper is going to be covered up. I know that. I thought about turning it around, but I ended up going with it upside down. That's actually a pie at the bottom, just because I knew that it wasn't going to be seen and I thought maybe the leaf would show. So here's where I'm going to add that last piece of pattern paper and then we're going to start arranging our collage. So there's different ways that you could go with this. I could have used a smaller sentiment and added it to some of those, uh, one of those smaller areas, but I thought that that cutest apple in the orchard just fit this card nicely. I have some toffee gouache and you can see that I got a little bit of a kind of a streak on that green apple. I'm not worried about that because I am going to place it behind two of the other apples. I colored one of the leaves and added it to my coffee mug and I'm going to start laying this out and I'm going to pop up some of the pieces using some foam tape. So I like to add foam tape to add different layers and different dimensions. As I mentioned, there's two pieces of cardstock 
uh, layered together for the sentiment. Uh, some of these pieces are going to be glued directly to the pattern paper. So this mahogany apple will get glued straight down. But then to add that dimension and to add a little bit more interest to the card, I'm going to add that foam tape to the back of this apple pie. Now for the apple pie for the container, I did use that same red Corinne Brush Marker Pro and then I used the grass to color in the leaves for my apples and also the leaves that were part of the pie. I used a couple of browns. One was called praline, another one was called sepia for those little flowers that are on the pie and that are also on this apple cider mug. I used something called cinnamon, which really didn't look like cinnamon color. I had to blend it with some of the sepia and some of the brown to get it to wash out. It had kind of a green tone, which was a little bit strange. Here I'm going to play around with the placement of my apples. I need to put my apple cider mug down first and then I see that that green apple is getting a little bit hidden so I'm going to move it a couple of times. I do have some wet glue on it so I'm able to lift it up and move it a couple of times before it's actually set. And once I get these apples in place, that will complete my card for today. So I want to thank you so much for joining me. I will have the... Um, greetery curio divider linked in the description box below as well as the paper that i used the fabriano artistico and then the Curran brush marker pros there are large sets there are smaller sets they're a little bit more expensive of a marker but what i really like about these markers is that they're very vibrant you can see that i do have nice vibrancy on all of my images and so you know, for me, it was worth the little bit of extra money to get these markers. And I really like, as I mentioned, the way that they work with the paper. Here's one last look at my card. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for watching.